Well, as you can probably tell, uh, I like Vietnamese bluebell trees. Uh, among my favorite trees. The flowers, uh, when they flower, they, they can, they're almost constantly in flower, a little bit. Um, but every now and again, every couple of months, they just cover themselves with these most amazing lavenderish colored um, mini orchids. They don't look like a normal flower with five, seven petals or whatever. When you look close, they look like tiny miniature orchids. Uh, absolutely beautiful. And so easy in this climate, so easy to look after. They get fed once every three weeks, four weeks, all of them. Uh, they're in full sunshine for maybe three or four hours during the day and in sort of shaded sunshine for the rest of the day. We're only a few degrees off the equator, so it's 12 on and 12 off hours wise for light and dark. Um, so they get fed every three, four weeks. And apart from that, they get watered every day because of the temperature obviously that we're in uh, you know 27 28 is a, is a low and it can go up to mid 30s or even higher but they love the sunshine um, the only reason that they're not showing a lot of flowers now is because I've trimmed some of them some of them are yet to be trimmed <laughs> and once cut uh, she will then come into into flower so they're so easy, just keeping the shape, if you're fortunate enough to have one that already has a shape. And um, just haircuts, basically. And that's all I'm going to do now. So you can see her face on. You can see she's overgrown a little bit. Just going to take her back and emphasize these clouds. And then just watch the clouds get fuller and fuller as time goes on. I, yeah, I'm not 100%. This shape was already, uh, had been created when I got it. And this copper isn't, this wire isn't doing anything. It was just silly. I don't know why they put that on. Maybe just to make it look more like a bonsai. I don't know. Um, but I've left her alone for a couple of years because it's not interfering with anything. But ideally, I would love to round off these uh, quite sharp angles. Just to round them a little bit. Um, which can do, she's fairly flexible, uh, but I'll leave that for a while um, because it will change the form somewhat. Okay, haircut time. I had a friend who, um, because of financial, the financial situation, i.e., the, the fact that our old age pensions the U, from the UK are getting effectively lower and lower. And although Thailand used to be a very cheap place to live, it's not quite as cheap, although it still is incredibly cheap. Well, my friend decided to uh, give Vietnam a try uh, because he'd heard some good stories. And so it's a huge thing. I was upset to be losing a friend and uh, he felt that he, it was the only real solution to the problem so it had to be done he lasted I think about a year <laughs> before running back to Thailand with his tail between his legs and uh, there was quite a few reasons why uh, but I think basically it, it boils down to culture. Although the, the Vietnamese uh, apparently are really loud, um, you know, your next door neighbor wouldn't think twice of blasting out music incredibly loud at two o'clock in the morning if they're having a bit of a party or something. Well, whatever. Um, it, but um, when he came back, he said the thing that he missed most was the the noise of Thai people talking to each other all the time, just as you can hear uh, our next door neighbor. Uh, he said, apart from the noise of the traffic and music and loud bikes and everything, very rarely was there any jollity <laughs> uh, between people here in Thailand. 
you can be standing by the side as a Thai person, standing by the side of the road, you see a friend coming down on their motorbike doing 40 miles an hour and you have a conversation with them. Hey, hey, where are you going? I'm off to the market. Great, that's it. <laughs> but that happens a lot. Um, so in some ways, I suppose Thailand could be noisy, noisier, but um, it, it's a human noise. And it was something that my mate really, really missed. Uh, amongst other things. Um, so, yes, apologies if you hear my next door neighbour, but I have absolutely no problems with it at all. And apart from anything else, she doesn't know this. Her laugh is just the most amazing laugh. She doesn't laugh, she cackles. And it really is like a witch's cackle. It is so funny. And she does laugh a lot, so she's obviously quite a good, fun person. Uh, speaks English very well too, uh, but I, I don't think she can hear me with this. All right, now I'm just noticing, this is another good reason why it, it's good to do regular maintenance. You keep an eye on things and you find things. I've got a little bit of a, a white deposit here, um, which could be bugs. So I'll... Uh, I'll keep an eye out on the rest of her. Uh, see where, oh, I can see another one. Uh, yeah, aphids. Uh, mm, maybe not. I don't know. But nothing obvious or no infestation as such. But I shall check as I go through. Um, you may also hear my wife and others talking in the background from the house. Uh, my wife has a firework business. Uh, we don't sell fireworks. We do firework displays. We're not allowed to sell retail, but um, we do provide displays for mainly for weddings, but birthdays and proposals and things like that. And tonight we have three shoots booked, three different places around the island. So she'll be quite busy with that. So you might hear voices coming from inside the house, which really would be to your right-hand side. <laughs> and here we go. It really is this simple. It really is this simple that you are just keeping the shape and by cutting the new growth, you're enc encouraging back budding which is lots of new leaves and lots of new little branches to effectively fill out these clouds. And over time, they should become solid and you won't even see any of the branches uh, underneath unless you want to expose them for effect. But yeah, it really is this easy, guys. Uh, it's no big deal. I think the biggest thing that kills bonsais that I've found out over the last couple of years, particularly in selling uh, bonsais to keep us going during COVID. Uh, it, it's watering. For some reason, it seems to get people incredibly confused. And yet, it really is the simplest thing, particularly out here, where we don't have the extremes of temperature uh, in the UK, you know, winter and then uh, summer. Well, extreme 25, it's a low here. But um, out here, all we need to do is to make sure the, the medium that you're using, soil uh, that you're using, never dries out. But you also need to be sure that it's never saturated for long, you know, a couple of hours. You can saturate the pot, dunk it underwater until it's completely saturated, but then don't give it any more water until it needs it, which is when it's almost dry. So out here, I tend to water in the middle of the night because I'm a night owl. Um, and by watering them at like midnight, one, two o'clock uh, in the morning, 2 a.m., uh, it, it, the medium gets saturated. Uh, the roots are, can relax and take up what they need. And then as the sun comes up, the medium, the soil will slowly dry out during the day because of the heat. And it normally gets to sort of late evening, and they're, they're not dry, um, but 
uh, that they're on the way to being dry, so they get watered again. It's as easy as that. And if you've got a little water meter, which you can buy 100 baht off uh, Lazada or something like that, you stick it in the soil and it tells you when you need to water. It's so easy. And yet, I've had people bring back dead trees after two weeks uh, or sending me pictures of dead trees saying, what's wrong? Uh, is it okay? Is it supposed to do this? <laughs> like drop every leaf. Uh, why, why is it dead? Have you been watering it? Yes, um, I've been watering it. It was, uh, it's been raining a lot, so I haven't needed to water it very much. I said, oh, so it's outside. No, no, it's inside. So, but if it's raining outside, how is that going to water the tree inside? Oh, the, the water's in the air, you know, so the air's very wet. So I thought, wouldn't need watering. <laughs> when, when did you last water it? The day after she took it home. So it hadn't been watered for two weeks. Indoors, in a window, with sunshine, uh, the soil dried out probably after two days. And from then on, it was an impossible task. But and it, I don't know, it gets me because it really is so easy. Don't let them stand. And this works with almost every house plant as well. It'll, it'll keep them alive. Um, they'll survive through it. Don't let the soil dry out completely and don't let it stand in saturated soil for too long. You know, and by too long, I'm talking like two days, three days, four days, whatever. You know, something like that is going to rot the roots. There are very few trees that can cope with being permanently in water or in saturated soil. Most trees can't. So you wait until it's almost dry and then you water it again. Ta -da! And that's all I've ever done with these bluebell trees. Um, we're a little bit busy traffic-wise because the soy next to us is having some tarmac laid or something. So people are using our little soy as uh, a shortcut. So we're having, normally we're very quiet out here. Um, there we go. As you can see, um, <laughs> something else. Quite often, you know, you get bigger scissors and just and all the leaves drop down. And then you spend hours and hours picking out the bloody leaves that have dropped on your gravel and don't make it look nice. So I do it in a meditative kind of way. Um, and normally I'm not talking, obviously, uh, but, but it is. It's almost like a meditation if you get into the point. You know, where you're close to the tree and you're looking at it and you're creating its shape. And um, there's something special about being that involved and, and watching it evolve over time, you know, into the kind of tree that you want. So this one would be tempting to cut it off because it's sticking way up above. I'm not. I'm going to cut the grow tip because I want it to spread out because later on I can wire this one and I can wire it down to be part of this uh, cloud here uh, and by then that won't be needed of this so I might as well cut these off now so I'll leave that one and uh, air cut and yeah to, to save all the messing about I've learned even though it takes a bit more time it's worth it literally cut your branches one by one be a part of it feel the tree Highlander reference there be the tree. Um, it gets you close to it. It gives you a sense of achievement because you really have taken an active part in creating it. And uh, I think these days, with all the stress and crap that we, we have in our lives, what well, you have in your life, not me, mate. Not out here. Um, not now. COVID. Woo! But not now. Um, you know, to have something like this as a hobby can make a huge difference to your life. And it's really funny because 
I'd say over the last couple of years during COVID and everything, um, as I've been selling bonsais just as a little bit of business to get some money coming in, I realized quite early on that the kind of person that's interested in bonsais, whether they're good at it or not, but the kind of person who's interested in it and maybe wants a cheap little one or something, you know, and scared about it dying. There's something different about people who like bonsais. Um, you know, there's a bit of a hippie there, a bit of a hidden hippie, <laughs> I think. You know, for, for people these days to go, yeah, tree's beautiful, tree hugger. It's almost like an insult these days to be a tree hugger. <laughs> um, or a tree lover, I don't know. But um, the people who I've met over the last few years, Generally, apart from one couple who stole from me, but hey, that's up to them. Yeah, Ben, you, mate. I'm not going to give your lady's name because that'll let people know who you are. Um, the, the, the people have been wonderful, and I've actually developed friendships with, with a few, more than a few, actually. Um, Maybe it's because they're at a, a, you know, a particular mindset or, or whatever, but uh, they just have an, a different appreciation on nature, I suppose, and wanting to be closer to it. Uh, what got me on that? Oh, yeah, the, the fact that I, I cut each little bit in its own time. Every bit that cut off is given its own time. <laughs> So I thank you for trying, but we don't need you. Now this this cloud is obviously it's pretty thick over here, but we, we've got a big gap and we've got possible extension here. So I won't cut that off. This one I will because it's coming from way back. But this I can, I don't know if you can see that, I can bend this round to make this, we close that gap, make it part of that cloud. Honey, Lon, sorry, Lon, oh, okay, Dial, wait, <laughs> and this is some information to pass on to her tonight for one of the shoots tonight that I might not have passed on. I forget shit all the time. Um, can you get new to find Annie as soon as he gets there to say hello? Yeah? Yeah, just to make sure he does, honey. She's waiting for him. Uh, one of the planners for tonight. Um, it's a wedding uh, at the Ritz. And the Chinese planner that has booked us hasn't used us before. And obviously it's an important event for her. Uh, it's a wedding, full stop. It's important. And it's at the Ritz, so quality has to be assured in everything, which we do anyway. But um, she's a bit nervous because she hasn't used us before. Um, and that's understandable. So I sent her a message earlier on uh, saying, don't worry, everything's fine. Not our first rodeo. <laughs> the guys will be there plenty of time. But I don't get as involved as I used to because it stresses me out too much. And uh, there's no need for it because Lan and her brother knew and her other brother, Non, 
they, um, they're better than me. And certainly as far as shooting, I like pressing the buttons. I make a huge noise, but they go for a display, a beautiful display. I just want bang. So yeah, I'm a bit lethal on the remotes, so I don't do that. They don't allow me anymore. <laughs> and I think that will do for today. Just a little trim. Next time, I'll probably clear some of the leaves that are closer to the trunk than we need so we can bear out uh, some of these branches. And um, that's the point. I'll be taking that silly copper wiring off, which is doing nothing. Um, and there's a couple of things I can do to improve the shape. You know, we need to give her a bit more of a crown and uh, a bit of saggy, a bit of movement in the clouds. But yes, yeah, she's got a good potential. She's a nice little tree. A nice little tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you can see it. And um, apologies for my waffling on. I come from the northeast of England and uh, it's well known. We have an extra gene. We have a gene that only uh, Southern Irish and some Northern Irish people have. It's a gene specifically for talking. <laughs> so no matter how I feel, ill-wise, there's a lot of things wrong with me. It doesn't matter because I can still talk and still operate. Enjoy your day, people. Uh, hope you like that. <laughs>